Hi, I'm Sonnet, and I'm with Sonnet's Garden Blooms, and I want to welcome you guys all to my channel. Today, we're going to be doing a flip video. So I'm taking five items uh, that I found in my last haul video and some items that I had in my hoard, and we're going to flip them. So I'm going to show you some different stamping techniques with the IOD stamps and just different painting techniques as well. So I hope you enjoy. Now, if you haven't been to my channel before, uh, my channel is all about DIY, flipping, um, the day in the life of a small business owner. So if you do like those types of channels, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, uh, turn on your notifications. So when I do release a video every Monday and Friday, you'll be notified. And tell me one thing um, that you liked uh, out of my flips today in the comments. All right, well, I hope you all enjoy. So I had this vase sitting around and I really did love the color of it. I am going to try to take this IOD ink, which is permanent. Uh, so if you do stamp it on any plates or vases like this, um, it is a permanent ink and it will not wash off. And I am going to take uh, the crockery set, which is one of my absolute favorite stamp sets from IOD. And I am going to try to stamp it on here. Now, what I've noticed with surfaces that are um, not flat, such as this vase, if they are slick like this, it's very, very hard to get a good impression and have that stamp not move. So I try uh, several, several times. And when the ink is still wet, um, before it dries, you can wash it off. So I try this several, several times uh, to make this try to be as perfect as possible. Uh, I fail miserably, or I feel like I fail. I think that it a couple of them actually looked halfway decent how I did it, um, but I wasn't happy with it. And personally, um, I like to have a nice, crisp, clean image, uh, so I just kept on trying it over and over. What I finally decided to do, so you can see here, I'm showing you... That one looked pretty good, actually. Um, but what I finally decided to do was wipe it all the way off. And I decided to take my blue tape and make um, an outline like a square and use um, that chalked uh, Rust-Oleum paint and uh, make like a, a little square of that and then stamp on that. Uh, after I did that all, I then um, clear coated it. Uh, so um, by clear coating it, it seals it um, and hopefully it won't um, rub off. So here I have two coats of the Rust-Oleum's chalked white or linen white on uh, the vase. And I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to pull the tape um, from it. And from there, I am going to show you how I stamp on here. So now that the paint is dry, I pulled the tape. We are going to use the IOD black ink and the crockery set to stamp on here. And if you haven't used any of the IOD stamps in the past, uh, when you do get a set, you just need to take a fine grit sandpaper and sand over the actual stamps to prep them. Now, um, I'm just going to centerize the actual um, stamp itself, and I hold it in the center, and then I just rub from the center over to get a full image um, on the actual vase. Very easy to use, and with that actual um, flat paint like it is, there was no slip like I was experiencing when I didn't have that. I pull it off and I got a very crisp, clean image. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, from this point, I just wanted to add a little bit more. So I found this twine, uh, I bought it at the Walmart, and I'm just gonna add some twine around the top of the actual vase. Uh, just very simple thing to add to it and it just adds so much to um, the actual vase. For my last haul video, if you remember, I got this crate. 
I took it, I put two coats of the Rust-Oleum's white chalked paint on it, and then I'm going to use my second favorite stamp set from IOD called Typesetting. It comes with uppercase, lowercase, and numbers. I like it because you can lay out the actual stamps where, um, like I want this to say welcome, and I pick it up, but you can see the L fell off, so I'm just realigning and... I am going to put that back on. So the E, um, I already had measured it out. Um, so the, the E I put at the very end um, of the welcome. So when I'm done, I'm going to go back and then stamp the E in the, the beginning of the welcome. So I flip it over and I am going to ink up the actual welcome stamps. And then we're going to stamp it. So once it's completely inked up, uh, if you just want to make sure if there is even like any excess over the edges, like I take that piece of paper towel and I just want to make sure that I wipe any excess ink off of that just in case, um, you know, when you do place it on there, you just don't want any of that ink to transfer to the actual sign itself or to the, to the um, crate. Uh, once you line it up, you just set the uh, letters down and then rub firmly over each one to get a nice image transfer. So now I'm going back and I'm adding that last E in the welcome. Very easy and because I had it all measured out, uh, it worked and fit in there perfect. I love how it turned out. So for my next project, I have shown this in a previous video, but I was cleaning out a bunch of my hoard in the basement and I found these plates and I thought this would be another perfect opportunity to show you all how I stamp on um, just the different plates. Uh, and this plate, the white one, I'm sure many are going to say it's, um, there was a the last time I had a white plate, everybody was like freaking out that it was uh, a special kind of plate. There's no markings on the back or anything. And it's just something I've had in a box in the basement forever. Um, but I used the Farmhouse Friends uh, stamp set from IOD. And I love this little pig. Uh, he sells so quick when I stamp him on anything. So you can see how awesome it turned out. And... Even if there was a little tiny mark, I just wiped it off. Um, and as long as it's wet, when you wipe it off, it will be fine. Uh, if it dries set, um, it's pretty permanent, like I said, after that. Uh, anytime I try to clean off my stamps um, right away uh, so that I'm they're ready to reuse again. Now I had these two small plates and I wanted to, one actually has, if you can see, the one has a little round circle. That one turned out to be a little bit more difficult to stamp on than the one without. So this one doesn't have the extra little round circle. I stamp this one and just like, it's so easy when it's a flat surface, not like that vase that I just did and picked it up and it was a nice crisp clean image and you can see now this next one caused me a little bit of um, grief because it does have like a spot where the teacup sits and um, the image wasn't as crisp as I had liked so I because of that you can see as I'm stamping it I press it down um, when I actually pull this back up, um, it slipped out of my hands and it created like a double image when it kind of, when it fell back down. Uh, because that happened um, and it kind of got on the edge, I just decided to start over. So as long as this ink is still wet, uh, you can just wipe it off if you have a damp rag and then dry it off um, real nice and then go ahead and re-ink your stamp and then redo it. Um, and again, even the secondary time, because of that little lip, I, I did leave it. I just was like, okay, it's unique in its own way. 
um, but it wasn't perfect like the other image. From my last haul, I did find this really cool, it was like a faux wood round piece, uh, real decorative. I ended up finding this in the 99 cent aisle at the local Goodwill. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take off the back and um, I actually had my screw gun and for whatever reason, uh, the bit in my screw gun was not the right size. So thank goodness up at our cabin, we also have a little tool stash and I was able to find a screwdriver and take that off. So once I get this off, my ultimate vision for this was I am, the back was painted black, but that front had that faux wood finish. I am taking um, that Rust-Oleum's flat um, spray paint and I am going to sp spray that whole front black. And then from there, we're gonna use the Rust-Oleum's white chalked paint. So here it's completely sprayed black. I'm taking the Rust-Oleum's chalked paint and I'm going to put two coats of white paint on here. Uh, once I have it, um, the two coats of paint, I am then going to do a wet distressing. What I found is with the chalk paint, it's so much easier just to take a, a damp um, rag or a baby wipe and wet distress it versus um, sanding it uh, with the chalk paint or the chalk type paints um, by sanding it it just makes a huge mess so what i like to use is the um, just a couple pieces of damp paper towel so once i get done doing this um, i'll show you how i uh, wet distress it so here I have a couple pieces of the wet paper towel and um, I'm sorry, the picture is probably gonna be a little shaky um, because as you wet distress it, you definitely have to do, um, you know, put some pressure down there on it. But I just wipe the edges, um, continue to wipe along all the surfaces that are raised that you can see. Uh, this goes pretty quick and I love the look of this, the distressed look. And like I said, the wet distressing just creates not that mess that you get with sanding. So now that we have it completely wet distressed, we're going to put this baby back together and um, maybe if I did it correctly, right guys? So uh, just screw it all back together and that was a really easy flip. I love how it turned out, uh, but yep, just screw it all back together and that was a quick, easy flip. So for my last haul video, I found these uh, cute little birds. I'm going to spray them first with the Ultra Cover Two Times Flat Black Paint. From there, I am going to take um, the Rust-Oleum's white chalked paint, and we're going to do two coats of paint on here. Uh, here, I already have the first coat done, um, so now I'm just doing the second coat and just full coverage of that. And then from there, we are going to do that same um, wet distressing technique um, that we did on the last sign. So here I'm just going to um, wet distress all the edges that on the birds that are um, kind of raised. So by the wings and around um, by its beak and um, probably the tail. Uh, but overall, um, I really love how these turned out too. Driving down an empty freeway, no waiting for the light to change. I'm seeing the sunrise behind.
So what was your favorite item today? I'll have to tell you, mine was that round um, piece. I, I love the faux look of the wood, and when I did the distressing, I love how that came out, but by far, that was my favorite piece. Now, Friday, um, I am going to do, I started the video up at the cabin, and I'm gonna be finishing it here. Um, many pieces from my haul. So I hope to see you guys all Friday and another flipping video. Have a great week. Bye.